Clearly a, a big win. They're, they're a good team. You can see how and why they've beaten the people they've beaten this year. Fritton was good. Dorsey was good. Similar stuff, to be honest, running up there. I thought Dorsey had good control. I don't think his command was as sharp early in the game. Maybe he got into the fifth and sixth innings before it started to actually sharpen up, in my opinion. The defense today stood out. You can go Cam had two or three nice plays. The bunt play, the other charge play. Lodis, the diving play, huge play. He had another kind of one-handed charge play. Fisher's ground ball, the 4-6-3. I know it's routine, but for a freshman out there in this type of situation, it probably hadn't had a lot of those. Can two, three nice plays at first base. We finally got back to the fundamental of obviously trying to cover first base, so that was good to see us snap out of that one. The play of the game was Diama as the catch. When he went in there, Max is fine. There was X-rays were negative. That did give Diama a chance to go in there and the catch. I think it was the fifth inning with the bases loaded. If he doesn't come up with that, that ball is sitting on the warning track in center field, and it's probably an inside the park home run. Game changing moment. His readiness. That guy works every single day like you've never seen somebody run around in the outfield. So for that's his reward for how hard he works. He's just an exceptional guy. And I was proud of that moment. He came in. It was one of the first times lately we've seen him actually stay on the ball and hit a line drive instead of some of the balls in the air the other way. He's working hard. So he broke this down after the game for us. I thought that one catch was clearly the game-changing moment. Proud of the defense, proud of Holtz. He kept landing the breaking ball. When he lands that thing, it's tough to hit. It's tough to lay off when it's down. They're a very gritty offensive team. They don't punch out a lot. They force you to do things defensively to make plays. Had some quirky things happen Friday night uh, on some of the infield hits. I don't think I've seen that many infield hits. But if you're punching out and popping up, that's not happening. So they managed that well. And I was really proud of everything that happened today, including coming out and putting four on the board in the first. They've responded to a lot of different things. And the frustration of Friday night and feeling that that, that one got away from us, even though we fought and seemed to almost answer and deliver and get back in it, we just could not overcome it. So the feeling yesterday to come and then not play the game and to have to sit on that and come out today, the, the response starting with, you know, the hit by pitch and then Cam's, Cam's home run set the tone. Big. What does it say about Carson for him to go five and two thirds and only give up one run against that lineup when he might not be the, the sharpest that he's playing? He's got good enough stuff to be a little off point with some things. Even the velocity, that wasn't what we'd seen lately. I can't explain why right now, what was going on. Micah, in between innings, they were trying to sink him back up. And all of a sudden, he threw, I feel like it was the fourth or fifth, he started to look like the ball had a little more life. But he's a tough kid, and you have to pitch through some stuff. And we needed we needed him to get us deep into that thing, deep. And he did. And that just shrinks things and minimizes, and you're not you're not using your bullpen for six, seven innings of the game. So he's a tough guy. He battled through not having his best stuff. And the matchup, you would think, with our left-handed arms, that some of their left-handed hitters, this was a good matchup. But it didn't feel that way. They hung in there. They sprayed it around. They put it in play. And they, they forced you to work for outs. And Dorsey battled through it. He only struck out three. But I think two of the three were after Fish hit the home run. And we separated a little more. And I thought that was his best one. I made a uh, diving catch, too, out in left field. Was that as well as you guys have played defensively? I mean, you guys have been good all year defensively, but some really highlight real run safety no, catches. No doubt. Um, Jaime came and got that ball really well. I, he's worked so hard. You guys, if you ever want to pop out here in September and October when we're starting this and they're playing balls off the bat, it's exhausting. That's our conditioning. And that's the truest rep you can get as a ball off the bat. The drills we do, sure. But those balls off the bat and the sink and the angle that these things take in these games, timing of the dive, really good. He's worked his tail off to become a good outfielder. And he made a couple of nice running plays today and really all season. But but today, clearly, that the one in left center was a nice, beautiful, extended catch, kind of coming in. It's awkward. Both of our dives in the outfield, I think we're almost coming in, which is a tricky thing because 
it's just it's not the same gauge as when you're diving left to right. So having to come in and try to extend and get through it's a little tricky. Coach, would you say the fast start the offense had today played a part in <clears throat> allowing Carson and Connor to navigate the game today? It probably did. You would think it's easier to go out and pitch with the lead. Sometimes when it's quiet and you feel like, oh, we're in control of the game, I think sometimes pitchers back off maybe a little bit of the stuff. So bringing your A stuff, which he didn't have the whole time, he still was in the zone enough. And their pay, you look at their walk strikeout totals, it's tough. Like they're, they're not an easy group. So um, yeah, it, it, you would think in theory pitching with a lead is more comforting to the guy on the mound. And most of the time I would say that. But some guys back off a little bit. I didn't think he did that at all. He had, to, he had to. He had to live. He had to sleep two nights knowing he was going to be the starting pitcher. Is that can that be a weird thing for a, for a kid that hasn't started a lot at this level? He thought he was going to pitch yesterday until I don't know six fifty, and then has to sleep on it again and pitch. Probably is strange. I hadn't thought about that. He's a hard working guy. This time of year, does the rest help you, or does the rhythm of what you're expecting to do throw you off? I, I hadn't really thought through that before. I guess. I almost look at it as okay. It's a, it's a rest opportunity, and this time of year, like clearly the arms are, they're worn a little bit. I'm not saying worn out, but they've been worn, and um, maybe it did affect him a little bit and coming out not quite being as crisp. But I liked it to be honest. To, yeah. When we had to deal with what we had to deal with yesterday and he didn't play, like it almost makes you feel better bringing Holtz back and Dorsey, and it just gives everybody a little more time. It, it seems like Carson is often at his best in adverse situations, guys on the base, things like that. I guess, is that from your experience something where it's a clutch can be a trait that some guys have more than others, and how much does that fit him? Some guys seem to dial it up, and I've had a lot of pitchers in my time that seem to dial it up. Now, when you're dealing with traffic, like the risk of what could happen is greater. And we saw him out of the pen a couple times. The traffic wasn't necessarily his friend. But when he's gone in and he started and he's had to deal with some stuff, maybe the feel for the game and the rhythm and what he's doing on the mound has helped him. And, and he dealt with it today a lot. And there was a lot of not crazy stuff, but he kind of was in it a little bit. And they bunt. And there's all aspects of your game have to be on when you have a team that clearly uses the bunt game and can run. And they have the lefties and righties. You're not really ever settled in what you're doing. But he managed it, and he did pitch his way out of some, some stuff. Was there a chance to play two today, or was it a travel thing with him? That field, by the time we left yesterday, that field was so muddy. And you had the, the lightning. Like, at 8 o'clock, we're in a lightning morning again. So if you start the game at 7.02, I, I, this would have been a complete mess. Um, because of the damage that occurred to that dirt, there was no, I was worried about it at noon. Like we couldn't take infield outfield because there was going to be no way to get the field right. To try to play a game at 10 was not feasible with the condition of the, the clay. That clay is very sensitive. And when it takes some moisture like that and you can't get it dry, once you put the tarp on overnight, it's not dry. If anything, it almost gets more damp. So there was no shot to, to figure out a way to start. You couldn't start a game at nine or 10. We talked about it, but we could barely get it going at 12.30, to be honest. There were some areas on the field that really concerned me, and their safety is my number one concern. And it would have been impossible. You would, and you would like to say, hey, at 9 o'clock you could do it. We had no shot. We couldn't take infield outfield at 11.45. There's no way we could have, we could have done it. I think it was a couple weeks ago you talked about Cam impacting the ball to the full side a bit more. So how good was it to see that, that swing in the first inning? Great. Like, we've seen it for – at least two weeks now. I'm trying to think back to, to Wade. He might have surprised himself that he hit one out the left center and then his, his other at-bats were a little peculiar for him. But he's going to have to continue to use the field. Like, using the opposite field is great. I think sometimes he gets pitched in a manner which he's learning, we're watching it happen, to open up that other side. That ball was absolutely hammered. It was as pure as it could be. It's great. And some of the doubles he's hit, like down the left field line, it just raises more concern if you're in the, the dugout to how, how do you try to get this guy out. Like, that way there's damage. Center field clearly on it, and now the other side. He's just advancing his understanding of him, how to manage being pitched. 
pinch difficult. How to manage that and learning himself. We're watching some of these guys just grow and learn as to how to manage their own body and their swing and what to do in these games and how they're being pitched. It's not easy to do it, but it is fun to watch some of these guys mature. Connor, in, in, in the fall and preseason, early in the season, it seemed like he was struggling to find the consistency of banging the breaking ball down below the zone. I guess, so what do you feel like has, has allowed him to, to gain that consistency and, and do what he's been able to do recently? Yeah, dropping that curveball, he was a little in between them. I think he had thrown a slider. He and Micah worked on that breaking ball, like a Kershaw type, the bigger, the bigger. Are you talking about Holtz? Yeah. Holtz, yeah. Um, I think just the confidence in repetitive use. He's had repetitive opportunities to go out there and bang it in there. And we saw little flashes of it. Then he did some of his hamstring over the break, and he wasn't healthy, and we were not ready to get him out there early in the preseason, and we kind of had to nurse that along. And then how do you get him in there with what we were running out there at the time when you had your rotation in check, you had Dorsey, you had Ox, you had Arm, you had all these guys to use out of the bullpen. I think more than anything, it was getting healthy and then getting into a game and having a good outing and then having another good outing and then learning that his role obviously increased and the frequency of us running him out there increased. So I think that's what it was. He was not quite ready when we started. But he's ready now. Like just real quick, just on that point, going the length of innings that he did, freeze up your bullpen, freeze up your starters here going into Jacksonville and then the day, you know, not going according to plan, but Saturday, so your staff's pretty fresh. Does that give you a little bit of flexibility going into what you do yes. Tuesday? I mean, some of those Tuesdays have been tough and our, <clears throat> our schedule's not easy. There's no breathers. There's no breathing room. Whether it's here or on the road, it's tough. So the more options you have going into it, I'm not saying the starting piece. We're, we're probably not manned to think somebody's going to throw eight innings on Tuesday. But the group of them can clearly do it. So when Mike and I go start to break this down here, it's more fun to break down what we can break down now than it could be if you had to use seven guys today.